Okay, everybody, now that we've talked about closely related keys to major, we're going to get a little bit darker because we know this sort of, this is nice. And even here, we can go to minor. But, you know, before long, we're just going to be back in major. And that's not that's not what we wanted. We don't want to change and go to G major. What kind of a, kind of a lame thing is that? We want to get dark. We want to sort of think about how this is going to be in a minor key. So the last thing that we remember is we were in major keys. I'm just going to flip through all this. And we saw that, wow, who would have thunk it? The sort of chords that showed up related to major were really logical. And they sort of were the chords that we were already uh, going to be using really typically in a major key. Let's see if minor works out the same way. My money's on no, because minor, you know, it's a little finicky. So the big question for us here in minor as always, is are we going to use the leading tone or not? That's the big question. Um, the leading tone has been sort of one of the most amazing things in minor, but it's also one of the elements that can be so problematic um, as we do this. And what we can think about, one helpful way to, I think, sort of view that is to think about the chord that we often use, which has the leading tone in it in minor, which is the five chord, right? So if we're in A minor here, if you can see the keys or not, use a keyboard. Um, if we're here in A minor, we usually use the five chord based on E, and we use with the G sharp on top because that's where our leading tone is. And that G sharp is so helpful for bringing us all the way back, pushing us back to A. That's its whole deal. And that's why it's so useful as a uh, part of a chord progression in A minor because it pushes us and keeps us in A minor. But as we talk about modulation and trying to leave A minor, I think we start to see why G sharp, the leading tone, can be a bit of a problematic note because its whole job is to keep us right where we are. So what we're actually going to need to do is investigate how to not use the leading tone because that's going to help us to modulate. And so what we're going to see is that extends to the key signatures that we would find here. The problems sort of continue down the road because if we're in A minor, again, not only does the E major chord have the leading tone, which is trying to keep us here in A minor, also going from the key of A minor to the chord of E major is problematic because E major is not one sharp or flat away from A minor. What's the key signature of E major? It's four sharps. Four sharps is definitely not one sharp or flat away from no sharps. It's very distant. And we can hear if I'm in these key, in the key of A minor, I'm sort of really just sort of feeling down in A minor and I wanted to try to get to a brighter place and go to E major, it's not this kind of, it's a pretty distant place to get there. It feels more dramatic than just sort of subtly uh, moving right along. So what we're gonna see is that we want to start thinking about what would happen if we didn't have the leading tone, which is that we would end up with the minor five chord. All those homework assignments where people draw the sort of little five Roman numeral without the bars and I, you know, flip out on everybody. Finally, you can write a minor five chord and it'll be good because that chord is closely related and that key, not that chord, but that key is closely related. E major is four sharps away from A minor, but E minor is a one sharp key. That's not far at all. And in fact, A minor to E minor is closely related. And so we sort of see that there's this really interesting thing where to be able to leave a key in minor, we need to use the network that is based not with the leading tone. So let's sort of see what we can do here. And what we're going to do, our first step is always to use the natural minor when we're comparing key signatures, right? Whenever you're trying to find closely related keys to minor, we're gonna use the natural minor keys. And we're gonna do this based around good old fashioned C 
minor, right? Here's our C minor. It's a good key there. So first what we want to do, let's find the minor keys that are closely related to C minor. C minor, of course, is a three flat key signature. So let's go on one side first. Let's think what are what's the minor key with two flats that is closely related here to C minor, and it's G minor, right? So C minor has three flats. It's not gonna be that difficult for me to get into G minor. That's a two flat key. So now, what's the other uh, minor key that's gonna be related? It's gonna have a key signature of four flats, and it's gonna be F minor, right? So if I'm in C minor, I'm sort of moving along, it's going to be very easy to be in this great key of F minor. F minor is sort of a much maligned but wonderful key. So those are the three minor keys in our network here. C minor is our sort of central hub. We're going to, I would call it probably the home key. C minor is the home key. G minor and F minor are both related. But now let's think of the major keys that are related. Our first and most critical related key that's major here is going to, be, of course, be the relative major. Because if we're in C minor, it's very easy to get into E flat major. It shares the same key signature. And so then we need to think about the relative major keys of these other two keys, the relative majors of both G minor and F minor. We're going to get B flat as our major two flat key and A flat major as our major four flat key. So again, we've got this great network of keys here that are all one or less accidentals away from C minor. So if I'm in C minor, it's really easy to get to any of these keys. I'm in B flat major now, right? That's so close. C minor again, here's my C minor. And if I wanted to go from C minor and get into A flat major, it would not be tough at all for me to do it, right? We can make these modulations very, very smoothly without having too much fanfare around them. Just like we did in major, I want us to see how this sort of lines up. And again, it's a little bit more funky because everything in minor is a little bit more funky. This is our network of keys here in minor. We've got C minor, E flat major, all the way up here. And so the interesting thing here to note, if we thought about how these would work inside the key of C minor, is first and foremost, we've got B flat, which is the flat seven key in B flat, or the flat seven chord. Again, very notable there. We're not using the leading tone. The leading tone of C minor would be B natural. So that's completely out, but B flat, that's a place that we can very conveniently go to. We're also missing anything with D as the root here. Why is that? Think about what's unique about two in a minor key. It's that it's diminished. It's really hard to modulate to a diminished place. We're in D or C minor here, sorry. I'm not gonna do that and say, look, you didn't even notice that I changed, right? So those are some important things. We're going to do some practice uh, with these, and uh, hopefully that's feeling nice and steady for us.